All right, welcome folks. We're gonna do body plot example for our students here. So in this example, we are asking you to draw body plot of the following transfer function, where I give you the transfer function here, h of s to equal to 40 times one plus s over 10 over s times one plus s over 50 times one plus s over 200. So it is very clear that in this transfer function, we have one zero uh, located at 10. We have one pole at the origin, one pole located at 50, and another pole located at 200. And the gain of the transfer function is 40. So the first thing we have to do is we need to plot the magnitude. And when we plot the magnitude of body plot, what we want to do is we want to get the magnitude uh, the 40, uh, we want to convert this gain to dB. So we say that the gain in dB is basically the 20 log of the 40. And when you evaluate this, you get roughly 32 dB. Then what we want to do is we would like to uh, use the semi-log graph. This is a semi-log graph to plot the magnitude. And the first thing we need to look at is we need to define the range of the frequency. So we have to think of the range of the frequency. And we need to think two steps ahead of us. The first one is we needed to know that when we do body plot, we plot the magnitude and the phase. Then when I wanted to specify the range for the frequencies and the log scale, I need to make sure that I will be covering the range required for the phase. Because the first corner frequency or the lowest corner frequency is located at 10, then for the phase I need to start a decade earlier so I will make sure that this will read the first segment here will read 1 then 10 then 100 then 1000 and so on so this is because I know that the phase must start a decade earlier before the smallest frequency so when I look at the range of the frequency I see that it starts at 1 then 10 then 100 and then 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. Now, when we wanted to plot the gain in dB or the magnitude in dB, I need to specify the range for the gain in dB. So I need to be a little bit careful. I know that I will start at 32 dB. Then I will have a zero, and the zero will go 20 dB per decade to the top. And I will do that for roughly about half a decade because at 50 I will flatten out I will get another zero so I would say that I would choose the zero somewhere in the middle the zero DB somewhere in the middle and then if I will do that then I will also decide that each interval over here will read 20 DB so if this is zero then this is minus 20 this is minus 40 and so forth if this is zero then this will be 20 40 60 and so forth so when I do the range in dB, that's what I do, it's minus 40, minus 20, 0, 20, 60, 40, and 60 dB. This is very important, that's something you have to think of by looking into the transfer function. You want to make sure that when you do the plot, you have the right range for the frequency and the right range for the dB to cover all the details required in the graph. Then what we're going to do now is we are going to plot each portion of the transfer function one at a time. This is the slowest approach. Once you do that several times, you'll be able to use a faster approach to do the body plot for the magnitude. So let's go over the first approach where we're going to plot each segment independently and then we're going to add all those segments together to have the final graph. Once we do that, then I'll show you the faster way or the shortcut. Anyway, so the first one will be the K, and the K here is 32 dB. So we're going to come to the 32 dB, which is somewhere around here. So this is where is the 32 dB, and we're going to have a straight line. So when we do the line, that's what we have, 32 dB. That stands for the gain of 40. That gives us 32 dB. Then I'm going to come to the 0. Now the 0 will have a corner frequency at 10 so I will start at 0 dB and I will continue at 0 dB until I hit 10 and once I hit 10 then I will read a straight line with a slope of 20 dB per decade 
So it is very important that the slope of the line will be 20 dB per decade, which means that the line will break at the corner frequency at 10, but it will read 20 dB at 100, and it will read 40 dB at 1000, and so on. So now we end up taking care of the corner frequency uh, at 10, which gives us a zero. And as you see that, you start from zero dB until you hit a 10, and then you read 20 dB per decade uh, as a straight line. Now we're gonna come to the uh, pole at the origin. Now the pole at the origin will pass the uh, frequency of one radian per second at zero dB, and it will have a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. So the pole at the origin will have this straight line where it will have 20 dB per decade and it passes through the 0 dB at 1. Now when we move to the next pole, the next pole will have a corner frequency at 50, so I have to come to the frequency at 50. This is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Here is the corner frequency at 50. It is a pole, so it's going to go with minus 20 dB per decade therefore after. So let's do the plot for this one so you can see that it goes straight until it hits uh, the 50 radian per second, the frequency equals 50, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then it goes 20 dB per decade from now on. The last uh, corner frequency we have, it's a pole at 200, so I will locate the frequency where it will read 200, so uh, uh, here is the 100, that will be the 200, so this is the 200 corner frequency and it's going to go again with as a pole, so it will be a straight line with a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. So when we do that, that's what we have, and now we end up uh, plotting the body plot of each individual segment separately. Now when we do the magnitude and we want it to combine all those graphs, we have to add those lines algebraically. So when we add the lines algebraically, we add the offsets and also we add the slopes. Right. So the, when we do the uh, addition algebraically, I know that this is the offset where I read 32 dB and then I have a straight line that goes with minus 20 dB per decade because of the pole at the origin, so this will continue forever. So all what I have to do is I have to offset this line, which reads minus 20 dB per decade, to 32 dB, so it will go somewhere around this area where it's going to pass the 32 dB at the frequency equals 1. And this will continue going until I hit the first corner frequency, which is 10. Once I hit the 10, then it will flatten out. So let's draw this line where I will read minus 20 dB per decade until I hit the frequency 10. So that's what I have here, is a straight line with minus 20 dB per decade until I hit 10. Now, this line has a minus 20 dB per decade continues, but I'm going to add to it a 20 dB per decade. So minus 20 dB per decade plus 20 dB per decade, when you add the slopes, it will give me a slope of 0, so I will have a flat line until I hit the next corner frequency which is located at 50. So now I will have a straight line until I hit 50 and then I will have from now on I will add the slopes. I have a zero slope and then I'm gonna subtract 20 and I will keep doing this until I hit the frequency 200. So when I do that that's what I have is a minus 20 dB per decade until we hit the frequency 200 and now I'm gonna add to this line, which has a slope of minus 20, then that will give us minus 40 dB per decade slope, and that's what we have. So this is the body plot that we have. If I delete all other segments, I will end up with the body plot that I want. This is the magnitude plot uh, for this transfer function. Now, uh, we can do this plot the faster way. If I practice doing body plots over and over and over again, I can do body plots straight from the transfer function without drawing all those segments and without adding them up. I can do that in my head because the concept is very easy. You add up offsets and you add up the slopes and you do that at the corner frequencies. 
So if we delete everything and we will start doing the whole graph from scratch, I know that I will start at the gain of 40, which is 32 dB. So I know that I will have 32 dB this way. But because I have a ball at the origin, then I'm going to have a straight line of minus 20 dB that will pass the 32 dB per decade at 1 right because I added actually the two graphs now the 32 dB and uh, the minus 20 dB from the pole at the origin and I will continue doing this until I hit the first corner frequency the first next corner frequency located at 10 so I will have a straight line that will pass through the 32 dB at 1 and it will continue going straight line until I hit the frequency 10 so when you do that that's what you have see it is very easy you took care of the first segment this way and now at 10 I end up having a 0 and the 0 adds 20 dB per decade so the minus 20 dB will add plus 20 dB that will give me 0 dB per decade so I will end up having a straight line with 0 slope so that will be a flat line and that will continue until I hit the next corner frequency so the next corner frequency is located at 50 so I will have a straight line until I hit 50 and that's what I have here once I hit 50 now I'm gonna add a minus 20 dB per decade slope uh, because it's a pole at 50 so I will have another straight line that will go with a minus 20 dB per decade you add 0 to minus 20 you will be minus 20 and this will continue going until I hit the next corner frequency which is 200 so when I do that that's what I have is a straight line with minus 20 dB per decade until I hit the 200 now I have another pole so I have to add another 20 dB per decade so that becomes total of 40 dB per decade. So in this part of the example, what I end up showing you is I end up showing you that you can do body plot straight from the transfer function without drawing the segments of each part. Now, to come up to this level, you have to practice body plot several times. So the more you practice body plot, the easier it will be for you to do this plot very quickly. So I always tell my students that practice body plot over and over again and then this problem becomes easy for you to do. So if you have a problem like this in the exam, you should be able to complete this problem in a very short period of time. So this is the first plot, which is the magnitude. The next plot basically going to be the phase. Now when we do the phase, we need to see total number of zeros and the total number of poles in this transfer function. For this transfer function, we have one zero and we have three poles so the final angle will be the number of zeros minus the number of poles times 90 degrees so here we have one minus three that will be minus two times 90 will give us minus 180 degrees so we know that the final angle will set at uh, minus 180 degrees now if we go to the semi-log scale that's the semi-log scale we already took care of the uh, frequency range from the previous plot we said that it will start at one because it should be a decade before the first corner frequency the first corner frequency is located at 10 so a decade before that will be one then 10 uh, 100 and so forth now when it comes to the phase we have to be careful right we know that the final angle will be at minus 180 degrees that's something we discussed but also because we have a pole at the origin we are going to have an offset of minus 90 degrees so that's where we start this pole at the origin will start with minus 90 degrees then we have a zero that will go from minus 90 degrees to a little bit up and then it will come eventually down to minus 180 degrees but to plot each one of those separately I have to also include that the zero will go from 0 to 90 degrees and each of those poles will go from 0 to minus 90 degrees the way we're gonna do it is we want it to have 90 degrees up but I want it to have 180 degrees down so I will start from minus 180 degrees and it will go up all the way until we have uh, 90 degrees so this is the range that I need to cover the plot of each segment 
for the phase of each pole and zero in this transfer function. So I will start with the zero. The zero basically says that we're going to go uh, 90 degrees from a decade before the corner frequency. So the corner frequency located at 10, I'm going to go a decade earlier, will be 1. And then I will go 90 degrees in two decades. So the straight line will be 45 degrees per decade. So from 1 to 100, I will go 90 degrees, such that at the corner frequency, I will read 45 degrees. So let's show you how the plot will look like. If you do the plot, that's what you have. For only the zero here, the zero that's located at 10, you're going to have zero degrees until you hit 1. Then you're going to have a straight line reads 45 degrees per decade, such that it will read 45 degrees at the corner frequency. And then it will flatten out a decade later, which is at 100. So you have 90 degrees at 100. Now keep in mind that those graphs are approximates. The corner frequencies here uh, are not exactly at 0 and 90. The one over here will be uh, 5.7 uh, 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 and the one over here will be uh, 84.3 uh, uh, but it will be 45 degrees at the corner frequency 10. Now we're going to come to the next pole which is the pole at the origin. The pole at the origin will read minus 90 degrees for all frequencies so when you plot that that's what we have is minus 90 degrees for all frequencies. The next pole is a pole at 50, so a decade before that will be 5, and the decade after that will be 500, and it will go with a straight line of minus uh, 45 degrees per decade from 5 to 500. So let me plot the line for you and see that when we come to the frequency of 5 around here, you will start to have minus 45 degrees per decade straight line until you hit the 500. So let's plot the line and see how it will go. So that's indeed what we have. It starts at 0 until you hit 5, then you have 45 degrees per decade, such that at 50 you're going to read f minus 45 degrees. And then it will go back to minus 90 uh, at 500. The final uh, uh, pole will have a phase will start from 20 and ends at 2000. and the phase uh, uh, will have a straight line from 20, which is somewhere around here, with a slope of minus 45 degrees per decade, and it will last until 2000, and then it will go flat. So that's what we have if you do the plot. So it goes straight until you hit at 0 degrees, until you hit 20, and then it will go minus 45 degrees per decade until it hits the minus 90, and you can see that it reads minus 45 degrees uh, at the corner frequency 200. So the rest is easy. What we have to do is we need to add the segments of the lines. The plot of the phase usually is a little bit tricky for one simple reason is each of those lines will have a start point a decade earlier and then an end point a decade later. So when we add the slopes we need to know when the line starts and when the line ends. right? So let's do that and let's show you how we are going to start to add all those lines together. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to be a little bit tricky. I know that from the end of the segment over here, when we come to the end of the segment over here, I'm going to read 180 degrees. That's something I already know because I know that the final angle should be 180 degrees. So as soon as all the lines ends, I know that I should be at minus 180 degrees. And this is a reality check for us. Yeah. So you know that you're going to end up with negative 180 degrees because you have 1, 0, and 3 poles. Right? So 1, 0 will be plus 90 degrees, and the 3 poles each will be minus 90 degrees. So when you add them all up, you're going to end up with minus 180 degrees. Now we're going to add all those lines here graphically. So when I add those lines here graphically, from 0 to 1, I only have the offset which is minus 90 degrees so when I do that that's what I have is minus 90 degrees until I hit 1 and then from 1 to 5 I will have plus 45 degrees per decade so I will draw a line from 1 to 5 with a straight line that will give me a uh, plus 45 degrees per decade so that's what I have uh, after that from 1 to 
uh, 20, I will have plus 45 degrees and minus 45 degrees. That will give me a flat out uh, slope. So I will have flat out until I hit 20. And now what I will have uh, is plus 45 degrees, minus 45 degrees, minus 45 degrees. That will give me minus 45 degrees slope. And it will continue until I hit uh, until 200. And then after that, this line becomes zero slope. And now I have two 45 degrees per decade. So that will be minus 45 degree per decade. When I add them up, I will have minus uh, 90 degree per decade. And that, and that will continue and, uh, until I hit the frequency 500. So I will have minus 90 degree per decade until I hit 500. And then from 500 to 2000, I will have 45 degrees per decade and that should go back to uh, minus 180 degrees. So that's what I have for the last segment. Now, this is the phase that you need to plot. Now, this one is a little bit tricky. You can do that from scratch, but it will be a little bit tricky. The reason is you need to know when the line starts and when the line ends, right? So you have to keep track of when the line starts and when the line ends. So let's go back and see if we can do all that uh, from scratch without doing the other segments, right? So right away, if I have this transfer function, I know that I'm going to start with the minus 90 degrees because I have a pole at the origin. So I will start with minus 90 degrees and I will continue having the minus 90 degrees until I hit the first corner frequency which is for zero that will start at one remember that the phase always starts a decade earlier so I will go plus 45 degrees per decade until I hit the next corner frequency which is at five so I will go plus 45 degrees until I hit five that's what I have and now at five I have a pole which will subtract 45 degrees so I'm gonna add 45 and I'm going to subtract 45 so I will get zero uh, degrees per decade so that's what I have will be flat line like this and that will continue until I hit the frequency 20 so once I hit the frequency 20 I stop at frequency 20 I will have uh, uh, another uh, 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 minus 45 degree per decade so I will have to go minus 45 degrees per decade in this direction and that will continue until I hit the next corner frequency which will be 100 because at 100 the first uh, uh, zero will end so I will go minus 45 degrees until I hit the 100 now this is gone I took care of the whole thing of the zero but I still have this pole and this pole so this one will give me minus 45 degrees and this will give me minus 45 degrees so I must go with minus 90 degrees until I hit the end of this segment and the end of this segment will end at a decade later which is at 500 so this will go minus 90 degrees per decade until I hit the uh, 500 and then I will have 45 degrees minus 45 degrees per decade for this pole until I hit the frequency 2000 and then I took care of all of the zeros and the poles and the transfer function I flatten it out at 100 and at minus 180 degrees that is basically body plot for uh, the phase body plot of this transfer function so uh, practice those transfer functions and then the more you do those kind of problems the easier it becomes for you and body plot is a very important tool engineers use the most important reason is most of the data sheets of the components that we use will uh, show you the performance based on body plot uh, so body plot is a very important tool for us to use and understand because most of the data sheets use body plot to describe the behavior of their components uh, i hope you enjoyed this example and good luck to you